Hey everyone, Nils here and welcome back to the channel. So today's topic is going to be tiny task and I'm going to show you a whole bunch of stuff you can do with it. I think a lot of people just think the tiny task is just meant for uh, AFK farming, but there's actually a lot of cool stuff you can do with it, which we are going to take a look in today's video. Now, I was always like 50-50 between making a video like this or not, but in my eyes, I thought it was pretty simple and pretty straightforward. However, I feel like, especially with this update, with the whole giant tiny thingy on the bosses, a lot of people have trouble. And yesterday, actually, I had five different occasions of people telling me that they cannot get it to work either at all or consistently. So here comes nothing. We're making this video. And after watching this, you are going to be having no problems at all. And trust me, guys, it is very, very easy. Now, before we get into these five instances of how to use TinyTask, I just want to tell you that um, I have all of these profiles saved and posted on my Discord channel, which you can find in the link down below. So make sure you join the Discord, grab the member role from the very first welcome screen, and there should be a TinyTask profiles channel on the Anime Fighter section of the Discord. So let's jump right into it, right? So we have the boss right here. Now, before I actually get into how to tiny task bosses, I want to talk about the whole tiny giant thingy that people have so much trouble with for honestly no reason. So there is one information that we have about bosses that is 100% correct, right? Bosses are always going to spawn in the same spot. No matter how many times you kill him, he's going to spawn right here. Now, that really solves our hands up. That means knowing that the boss spawns here, all we have to do is basically find out the dead center of his model, right? Now, I guess I'm just going to edit a cross just to help out with his right or straight line. But uh, just imagine that this is the boss, right? If we stand right in the middle of the boss and we just draw down this line with my mouse, we know that the dead center of the boss's model is this. Now, since the boss does not move, that means that this model is going to be always here, centered around this area here where my mouse is right now. Now, all we have to do is we're going to take our fighters out first of all. And what I like to do is I like to do this. I like to just zoom out and now I'm going to put my mouse right here. Now, my mouse is perfectly positioned in the center of the boss. Now, no matter if the boss spawns big or small or normal, this thing is going to hit the boss every single time. Trust me guys, it's worked, it's been tested, and it works 100% of the times. So all you have to do is you have to align your mouse with the middle of the model. Now let's head over to how to tiny task this actually. One thing to note, if you want to tiny task AFK farming bosses, the first thing you should do in game is you actually want to go here over to the settings and you want to turn off send all fighters. Now the next thing that you should do and I feel like this is another reason why people struggle with uh, this update is people, for some reason, they try to tiny task the entire kill, which lasts minutes. Now, I will tell you a couple of reasons why this is wrong. Obviously, now the problem is that you cannot like calculate how much HP the boss is going to have. Now he has 800 trillion. Next up, he might have 800 trillion or 400 trillion, depending on the passive. But besides that, Tiny task is a very good program, obviously, that you it, it's really helpful, but it's really not a crazy scripted program and it can almost malfunction multiple times. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it, like sometimes it doesn't work properly. And the longer you record a tiny task, the more chances you have of it not working properly. So recording a very small tiny task is the best way to go. Also. It is the best way to go in game as well, because if I just send my units right. Oh, something I want to mention as well. Now, for those of you guys that may not know how it works when you unequip send all fighters. Now, if I just click one time, only one fighter was sent right. So two, three, four, five, six, etc. However, if I press and hold my click, all of my fighters will go. Now, press and click and you see all of my fighters attack. Now, that's one thing. So the idea behind this thing is to tiny task the X amount of seconds that you require to ultimate cancel ideally on your strong units. Now, ultimate canceling has proven to be a DPC increase or DPS increase, damage increase, whatever you want to call it rather, not DPC for sure. So what we want to end up doing is we want to record a sequence of doing this. So press our mouse, hold our mouse, and now I'm just going to 
pretty much do it on my bravery. So there we go, three hits. And now I want to ultimate cancel and go again. One, two, three, ultimate cancel, cancel, go again. Just by holding on my mouse button. And that's basically the sequence that we want to do. It is faster than just leaving it like this for, I don't know, one, two, three, five minutes and doing it again. It is safest as well because time does cannot malfunction. So we have to kind of pinpoint the amount of seconds that it's going to take us for this action to happen, right? For the first ultimate cancel. Now, one thing to note is that uh, you want to be setting up your preferences, your play speed to times two, right? Because the reason behind that is there is like a small delay where you pull out your units and you attack again. Now, having your speed on playback speed on times two, it eliminates this uh, whole time loss that you have on your units. Like, look at this now, right? So I'm going to retreat and I'm going to attack again. Now, there's like 1.5 to 2 seconds gap in between. Now, having this on times two speed eliminates that gap. But that also means that we kind of need to increase our timer by two on our tiny task recording. When we play it two times faster, everything is going to play to normal. No, so calculating all of this and keeping all of that in mind for a three hit unit i would say you want a tiny task it for about 10 to 11 seconds so let's go ahead and do that so i'm gonna press my recording key i'm gonna hold down my bass button and now we're gonna count 11 seconds on our recording box on tiny task and after that i'm just gonna press my mouse button to release our units and stop the recording so there we have it now if i just go ahead and play it on times two speed this is what's end up happening my units are going, he's going to do his ultimate now and it's going to cancel. We also want to turn on continuous playback and you're going to end up basically being in a perfect loop where you're going to be casting one ultimate and then you're going to be ultimate cancelling and then the same thing happens again. You see our units are going back and now this process is going to be repeating on forever and ever. And just to perfect this now in terms of positioning. We want to look up to the sky, we want to position our mouse into the dead center of the boss's model. And there you go. At this point, guys, you are done. You can go sleep, you can go study, you can go to the gym or whatever you have to do. You can go to work. And this is basically a perfect loop that you will not have problems. You will come back and you will find your character farming. Now, apparently I released the ultimate a little bit too early on this recording, but it doesn't really matter. Now. This is the only profile that you will not find on the Discord server, guys. For whatever the reason, when a recording is so slow, it does not uh, save. Like, you try to save it and it doesn't save anything. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk about, which I actually find... Now, this is the most important tiny task, right? The auto farming. But the next thing that I'm going to show you guys is something that is actually going to solve your hands and you are going to absolutely love. Now, you know that everybody, when they go to time trial, everybody who is at their intermediate level plus, they swap out their solid gold units to finish off a kill and get more money. Now, doing this in time trial can get frustrating because you're going to end up doing this for the last probably four to five rooms before you lose. And that can be a little bit annoying. Now, we're going to be tiny tasking our way to unit swapping. And we're going to have two tiny tasks for this, and I'm going to explain you why in just a little bit. Now, first of all, before you do this, I want to tell you that uh, you should label all of the units that you want to swap with a different name. Now, I want to be swapping here to my collector units. I have labeled them all with a hashtag. So when I search hashtag here, it's going to be looking something like this. Now, you want to be doing this. You want to be searching for whatever you want. So I have hashtag for collectors and dollar sign for these rich units, right? So you want to choose whichever you want to go to. Like if you were in a time trial farming, like now I would do damage to the boss and I would have the dollar sign on and I would have these units waiting, ready to be switched. Now we're going to go with collector just for this one. So I'm just going to go ahead to my tiny task and I'm going to open my swap unit. Now we're going to be setting this to playback to custom speed 97. Now for some reason, guys, setting this to 100, 99 or 98 does not work. It is too fast and Tiny task is not working properly, so the high speed that you can set this and it working properly is 97. So set custom speed to 97 and for this one we are going to be turning off continuous playback or what's going to end up happening is you're just going to equip and unequip your units all the time. Now that being in mind, 
we have our units right here ready to be equipped. We have chosen the hashtag or dollar units, whichever you want. And we're going to close this one. Now I'm going to play the tiny task file and this is what's going to end up happening. Equip, 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 equip. Now one thing guys that I want to tell you, which is really important for any type of tiny tasking, when you are recording your tiny task, leave a couple of breathing room between your actions. Like you should leave like a half a second before your actions. As you can see, I could definitely do this swapping much, much faster. But uh, if you do it really fast and then you play it even faster through the preferences mode on the play speed, what's end up going to happen is it's not going to work. Same thing with when you are trying to record farming, like when you press record and you instantly click like 0.1 second after there is a high chance that uh, this click is not going to register on the recording. So as always, give it a breathing room, like give it a half a second breathing room between each important action. So this is our collector swap. Now we're going to do a solid gold swap. So there we go. We're just going to be swapping over to our man units and that's it. Now, I also have a second file in regards to this uh, swapping method added to the Discord. It's called now this one is called normal swap, right? It's called the unit swap. I also have something called solid gold swap and I'm going to show you what happens with that right now. So if I go to equip my best right now, if you guys have a solid gold unit in your main lineup, just like I do here. Now, what's going to end up happening? Because you see this guy is equipped right now, right? So what's going to end up happening if I press my unit swapping is this. I'm going to unequip my unit that I have in my main team. And I'm also not going to equip one of these units because it's going to unequip it and it's going to bounce a spot back and it's going to cause that problem. So the problem to fix this would be to simply just unequip or before we swap to our solid gold units. Now, I'm just going to go ahead over to my tiny task app and I'm going to load solid gold swap. Again, playback speed is 97. Continuous playback is turned off. We just want to do this once. And you see, I have solid gold in my main lineup. And what happens now if I press my tiny task is it's going to unequip. Oh, okay, never mind. Forget that. I didn't uh, do this. I didn't do the dollar sign first. So we have prepared here what units we want to swap to. And now you will see what's end up happening is it's going to unequip all and then it's going to start equipping. So we're not going to have the problem where our units will not come out. And that's an easy way to solve this. However, if you don't have a solid gold in your main lineup, you don't really need this. You can just take the unit swap off the Discord and you are pretty much done. Now, next up, we are going to be moving over to some uh, feeding and the super island. So we're going to be opening our very first file, which is a uh, feed one. Now, each and every feed file that I have in the description on Discord is going to end up feeding your very first fighter equipped, right? Your very first equipment slot. Now, you may ask me, Nils, what do I do if I want to feed this guy or this guy or this guy or this guy? Now, it's very simple. You just have to unequip every unit until the unit you want to feed. Let's say I want to feed this Papa right now, right? So I'm just going to unequip everything. And the only problem with it now is if you go ahead and open a star, the first three units that you will open are going to be automatically equipped. Now, we don't want to do that because we don't want to occupy space. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm just going to equip three other units that are weaker than this guy. So I'm going to equip this one, equip this one and this one. So we're in this situation now where we have everything equipped and we have the unit that we want on the first slot. So feed one, what it basically just does, let me go ahead and put speed on one as well. You want to be running this on speed one, normal speed and continuous playback on so that it keeps on looping and looping and looping. Now, this thing is just going to basically open stars up until 1.1K, I think somewhere like that. I think it's for four minute recording and then it's just going to feed everything into your first fighter equipped and it's just going to loop again and again and again. Now, I'm not really going to let this play through the entire time. I think it's pointless, but uh, you get the point. Next up, we have our max open feed, right? So the name is super feed. What that's going to end up doing is you're going to be max opening. You're going to be feeding the max open. And then for the next one minute and 25 seconds, you are going to be normal hatching. Then you will cancel your normal hatching. You will feed these units and then you will go back to the start where you max open and repeat the same thing. Now, it's not 
tightly scripted to 130 seconds. It's about 135 seconds for the simple reason that I just explained to you earlier. It's very easy for tiny tasks to not work properly and miss out on actions. So you should always leave a small breathing room of half to one second. So I'm just going to go ahead here and open super feed. Playback speed on one, continuous playback. And this is what's going to happen if I start playing it, right? So there we go. Max open, boom. I am going to open my tab now. It's going to feed over to my first fighter. Select unlock fused. And now for the next one minute and 20 seconds ish, 15, it's going to open stars and then it's just going to feed. And that's all you're going to do. Go. So, I don't know why it had continuous playback on, but um, you get the point anyway. So that's how Super Feedy works. Now, the last one that I have is called Fish, the recording. I'm just going to load it up real quick. Now, what that does is it's kind of the same principle with this. This is mostly used when you want to go back into a previous star where you are trying to hatch a secret, a divine or a shiny mythical. And for this one, you want to be having your auto sell on because we're not going to be doing anything with these units. Now, you're going to be selling everything except the shiny mythical, obviously. Or even if you don't care about that and perhaps you're a more advanced player and you want to strictly hatch a divine, you're going to be obviously turning this one on as well. And now what this one is going to be doing is kind of similar to what we did now, except it's not going to feed anything. It's going to be mass opening every 90 seconds and then it's just going to normal hatching without doing anything. Now, since we have auto salon, it's not going to ever interfere with our backspace, so it doesn't really matter. And there we go. I'm just going to showcase this to you real quick now. So I'm going to play with the recording and there we go. Now that's a max open and then it's just going to start opening stars for the next one minute 30 and it's going to repeat again and again and again. And that is pretty much all there is to it. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about, and actually the last thing, is Auto Clicker. Now, since we're using Tiny Tasks to do all these various tasks, we can also set it to make an Auto Clicker. However, I think that is uh, kind of pointless because the problem with putting an Auto Clicker through Tiny Task is that you are occupying your Tiny Task profile, right? So you cannot run two profiles at the same time. And let me just go ahead and swap back to my solid code swap on my tiny task and I'll show you what I mean in a second. Now, for those of you who know or may not know, when you're doing damage to a mob, if you have your auto clicker on the auto click button down below, it does actually work. Even if you have auto clicker as a game pass, if you put your auto clicker on that thing and you mash it all the time or if you just click all the time, you can get up to 10% increased damage. So the best thing to do is I personally use Razer Synapse because I really like to just uh, put it on the side of my mouse buttons on my Razer mouse that I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go here and you're going to notice that uh, killing this guy normally is going to take roughly 25 seconds. So the next 25 seconds Inferno is going to die. And then we're going to do the same process with auto clicker and if you actually count it's going to take roughly 22 to 23 seconds so you can see that it's 10 percent faster now that is free damage and that is something that you should also know and the reason that i do not suggest you to put this on your tiny task profile is because let's say that um we are in time trial right now just imagine that we're in time trial or not even like this boss also works right so I'm just going to go ahead and attack. I'm going to turn my auto clicker on and I'm going to put it on the auto click button, the DPC button. And you see that the boss is going to die a little bit faster, 10% faster. But now what happens is if you have this on your tiny task, you really have to just uh, open the recordings panel and then you have to load your swap. So that's kind of a time worthy. So I'm just going to cancel my auto clicker now on my mouse button and I'm just going to press my thingy where it is going to just swap to my solid gold units and boom, I don't have to bother with that anymore, right? So that's kind of like two in one. Now, I know that some people are using a different uh, auto clicker. I think it's called the GV auto clicker or something. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, any auto clicker works. It doesn't really matter. I just use Synapse because I like it and there's pretty much all there is to it. Now, 
Another last thing that I want to talk about that is also quite important to remember is, as I have said multiple times so far, TinyTask is a very, very sensitive application, right? So if you have a profile loaded, for example, the unit swap profile loaded, let's say that you want to stop playing the game and you want to go AFK, so you want to auto hatch. When you want to swap profiles, do not press the open button, swap profiles. Close TinyTask, open it again, and then open the profile that you want to load up. Because oftentimes when you swap between profiles, TinyTask just uh, gets confused, I don't know, and your profiles are getting ruined and they do nothing. So what you would have to do is you would have to delete it and download it again. So just remember to close your TinyTask, open it again, and then load the profile that you want to load. But uh, anyway, guys, that was pretty much all I wanted to show you for this video. Hope you found it helpful. Like these tiny tasks are really going to make your life much, much easier in a lot of uh, aspects. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to click that like and subscribe button down below. It helps me out a lot. And make sure to click the notification bell as well to not miss any of the future uploads. And until the next one, take care.